In the previous lecture, we discussed the relativistic kinetic energy of a particle. So we were able to show that kinetic energy, just like time, distance, length, and momentum, is a relative mechanical quantity. That is, the kinetic energy of a particle basically changes when we change inertial reference frames. So we were able to derive the following equation that that is the relativistic kinetic energy using the work energy principle. So this equation basically tells us that the kinetic energy of our particle is equal to mc squared divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared minus mc squared. So m is the mass of the particle, c is the speed of light in a vacuum, and v is the velocity of that particle. So. Let's actually examine this equation in more detail and let's actually try to find the meaning behind each one of these two terms. So we have term number one and term number two. Let's begin with term number one. What exactly is the meaning behind term number one? So we have mc squared divided by the square root of one minus v squared divided by c squared. So let's try to increase the velocity of our particle and see what happens to this fraction. So as the velocity v of our object of the particle increases, notice that this denominator will decrease and that means this entire fraction will increase and so as the velocity increases, this entire fraction increases and since this increases, the kinetic energy of our object of the particle will also increase. Increase. However, what happens if the velocity goes to zero? So if the velocity goes to zero, notice that this is zero and we have one minus zero, which is simply one. The square root of one is one. So we have mc squared minus mc squared and that gives us zero. So in fact, if the velocity of our particle goes to zero, this term becomes mc squared and the kinetic energy of the object goes to zero. Now, as we'll see in just a moment, this term actually gives us the total energy of our particle that has a mass m and a velocity v. Now, we're not taking into consideration potential energy. So, this equation does not take into consideration the potential energy of our object, such as the gravitational potential energy or the electric potential energy. Now, let's move on to term number two. So now we're dealing with mc squared. So notice that m, the mass of the object, is a constant, and c, the speed of light in a vacuum, is also a constant. So we see that mc squared is a constant, and this constant, as we'll see in just a moment, is known as the rest mass energy of our particle. Now let's take this equation and let's rearrange the equation to get the following result. So by rearranging equation 1, we get mc squared divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared is equal to k plus mc squared. So we basically took this negative term and we brought it to the left side of our equation. Now, from this equation, we see that term number 1, this term, represents the total energy of the particle, assuming we are not discussing potential energy, assuming the object does not have any potential energy. So, the total energy of our particle E is equal to the sum of the kinetic energy of that particle K plus mc squared, where mc squared is known as the rest mass energy of our particle. So, this equation, we call it equation 2, gives us the total energy of the particle that has a mass m that is moving with a velocity given by v. So if our particle has a velocity v, then that means it will have a certain kinetic energy k. So we take that kinetic energy k and we add that to the mass 
energy. So the rest mass energy and that sum will give us the total energy E given by this equation. Now what happens if the velocity of our particle goes to zero? Now if the velocity goes to zero, this k term will also go to zero. And from equation two, we get equation three, which is basically the famous Einstein equation, E equals mc squared. So this equation gives us the energy of our particle that has a mass m that is stationary, that is at rest, and this is known as the rest mass energy. So E equals mc squared is the energy of our particle that has a mass m that is not moving, whose velocity is zero. Now, what exactly exactly is the meaning behind equation 3. So why is rest mass energy so important? Well, basically equation 3 mathematically relates energy to mass. So basically mass is one form of energy in the same way that we have kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, elastic potential energy, electric potential energy. Mass is itself a form of energy. Any object that has mass and is stationary has rest mass energy. And in fact, experiments show that mass can be readily transformed into energy and energy can be readily transformed into mass. So there's a reaction known as the photon pair production reaction that basically transforms a photon, so energy, into mass, into electrons and positrons. And if we take two positrons, or actually if we take a positron and electron and collide them at very high velocities, those masses will cease to exist and they will produce photons. They will produce electromagnetic radiation. In fact, if we examine the reactions that take place on the sun, the thermonuclear reactions, those reactions basically destroy the particles found on the sun and that releases electromagnetic radiation. So mass is constantly transformed into energy on the sun. And that's exactly why the mass of the sun continually decreases and eventually the sun will burn out because all that mass will be destroyed.